How's it going, y'all? Let's convert this number to binary. Now, your computer may represent this number in a few different ways, but most commonly, it's represented as a floating point using the IEEE 754 standard. This is what we're going to look at in this video. First, we have to decide the level of precision to use. This can be either half, single, or double precision. In this video, we're going to use single precision, which is 32 bits, though the method is similar for 64 and 16-bit representation. This method splits up the bits into three main sections. The first is the sign bit, which is set to zero if the number is positive and one if it's negative. Pretty simple, so let's set that to zero. Let's skip the middle piece for now and let's move directly to the last piece called the significant. This is the part that represents the whole and decimal values of the number in binary. So we'll convert the whole number of 123 to binary first. Remember that binary is base two. So if we lay out the orders of two, we can go from left to right setting a one or zero as needed as long as the total is less than or equal to 123. So we start with a zero because 128 is greater than 123. We can set a 1 at 64, 32, 16, and then 8. This gives us a sum of 120. We skip 4 because this would set our running total to 124. Instead, we set 1s at 2 and 1 to get a total of 123. So this is 123 in binary. To represent the decimal value, we do the same thing, except the exponents are now negative. So if we lay out the orders of negative 2, we keep adding from left to right as long as the sum is less than 0.456. We skip the half, setting a 0, and then we take 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 sixteenth. We skip 1 over 32 because this would take us over our number, but we set a 1 at 1 over 64, and so on. Here I have the number up to 20 significant digits. This gives us this number, which is close to 0.456, but not exact. This is what we mean by precision. If we add more bits, we would get closer and closer to the true number. Putting it together, we get a binary number that approximates 123.456. This is what goes in the significant part of the IEEE 754 representation after a couple of small steps. So first we drop the leading one because we know that this is always a one. This is called normalizing and it frees up an extra bit we can use to store more information. Now we truncate to fit the 23-bit allocation, making sure to round the last digit. In this case, since the 24th bit is a one, we round our last digit up. Note that since we only have 23 bits to store this number in, the larger the whole number, the less precise we can be with the decimal part of the number. So before we drop the decimal, let's just note where it is, i.e. here it's in the 6th position. Now we can go back to the exponent part. This is how we keep track of where the decimal was in the number. In our case, the decimal came by moving down 6 places. Note that the max integer that these 8 bits can represent is 255, but we also want to be able to represent negative exponents. This is why we add a bias term. For 32-bit numbers, this is 127. So for example, if we want to represent minus 6, this would be 127 minus 6, which is 121 and this in binary. In our case, our exponent with bias is 6 plus 127, which is 133, and this in binary. And that's it. This is how your computer represents floating point decimal numbers. Make sure to subscribe for more deep dive development related videos like this. See you later.